morning guys! First off, I want to kind of point out that I know Christmas is right around the corner. I will be celebrating it with the next review, as late as it may be. That being said, have you heard that they're remaking the Powerpuff Girls? Now, I'll be the first to admit I wasn't a huge fan of the originals. But that's what happens when you're locked in a room with two little kids and one single Powerpuff Girls VHS tape and they want to watch it over and over and over and over and over. Sorry, sorry. I didn't mean to go there. The news of a remake made many make videos about the topic, including one very good one by Pie Guy Rules. Now I'm using his as an example. I'm not calling him out or anything because he made a lot of good points in this video as into why a remake would not work. But I honestly think that there's a chance for it to succeed. As long as they stay true to the original. And this is where Powerpuff Girls Z comes in. PBGZ ran for just under a year and had a total of 52 episodes and honestly, I think it should have ran a little bit longer. It had so much original content coupled with having almost every single villain from the original. Some appear moderately unchanged while others have had major overhauls, most of the time for the better. Just look at Mojo Jojo and him, both of which are prominent in today's episode. For Mojo, they took the little chimp and made him appear more like a gorilla, making him more threatening and more intimidating than his original counterpart. Now, one villain I never liked was the original him. Say what you will, but even as a kid, I thought he looked stupid. Now, I do get what they're going for. A satire of Satan. But boy did they fail miserably. What does the new him look like? Okay, yep, you're creepy. They made him into a freaking Harlequin? That's actually kind of awesome. Yes, the heart-shaped belt buckle thing kind of takes it away, but... At least this guy knows how to make even that look unsettling. But that's enough of the villains. How do the Powerpuff Girls look? Since this show is named after them? Actually, they look like legitimate superheroes. The designs do echo their originals, much like most others here, but they've also been given a major update. And they all have special weaponry. Yeah, you heard me, they have weapons. Blossom has a supercharged yo-yo, Bubbles has a magically massive bubble blower, and Buttercup has a supersonic mallet, which if you ask me, looks more like a warhammer. Also, one thing that the show does that I think was a really, really great idea, the girls aren't born with their superpowers. They're gifted their abilities by this white light that destroys an iceberg that was about to crash into New Tokyo. New Townsville in the English dub. And speaking of dubs, the Japanese dub was the only one I could find for today's episode, so I will be referring to the three leads as their Japanese names. Momoko, Miyako, and Kaoru, reverting back to Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercup when they transform. Otherwise, it'd be like calling Peter Parker Spider-Man even when he isn't in costume. Today's episode is called Girls Breaking Up, and is loosely based on the original episode Octi Evil. You'll see why later on. In case you haven't caught my top 10 anime themes list, I have a very soft spot for this theme song. It's a beat, it's the theme song I think of when I think of happy sounding tunes. We then see him trying to relax at a pool, but he gets tormented by memories of three girls knocking the ever-loving hell out of him. They're the Edo period's Powerpuff Girls essentially, and they play a key part near the end of the series. The people around him laugh at his outburst, causing him to retaliate. Then this happens. What are you going to do? Hmm? <laughs> this is a kid's show, right? Okay, you got me on that one. I'd be lying if I said this didn't get me to laugh, so kudos! Come to find out, he controls these black particles, yes, that's what they're called, that have been picking up intel on the girls, including where they live and their true identities. So why don't you go after them? Kinda makes me think of Iron Man 3 when Tony Stark gives away his home address, except a not Mandarin decides to play some elaborate game with him instead of bombing his place to bits. Hell, the particles even tell him to strike after they reverse transform. But no! Anyways, him tells the black particles his latest plan and they carry it out. 
The next morning, Momoko, Miyako, and Kaoru meet up to go to school, when Kaoru discovers Miyako's Akti doll clinging to her backpack. Miyako keeps it in her locker, though it can be seen grabbing something out of another locker nearby. Later, we see Kaoru eating lunch a bit early before they go to B.E. Okay, so my Japanese is terrible. Can't blame me for trying? Yes, I can. Kaoru barely arrives on time, just before Momoko practices her vaulting, though everyone else seems a bit shocked by this. I wonder why there's a hole in her pants. Okay. My only thought is that she didn't see this when she put the uniform on. Anyways, the trio are seen in an embroidery class when Momoko finds the scrap piece of her uniform in Miyako's kit. This causes a lot of understandable tension between the three of them. It only gets worse when Momoko and Miyako's lunches go missing. Since Kaoru was eating hers earlier, the other two came to the conclusion that she must have eaten theirs too. Meanwhile, him goes to pay Mojo a visit, and with a bit of manipulation, he is able to make Mojo work for him. But since Mojo already has some of the black particles inside him, they're what made him evil in the anime, he should be able to easily control him. But it'd take away from Mojo's comedic character, so I see why. Mojo assaults the city, causing the transformed Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercup to go against Mojo. But their squabbling stops them from attacking. This gives Mojo the upper hand, and just before he is able to destroy them, the three are picked up by Professor Utonium. Yes, he's also in the anime, but he has a son, Ken, and a robotic dog, Peach, which is named Poochie in the English dub. I can only briefly describe how utterly stupid that name is. Seriously, it's terrible, and for a character who actually triggers the PPG's transformations, you have to hear it called out every time in the English dub. Mojo takes over the mayor's office and Miss Bellum becomes a turncoat. Did she ever do that in the original? Please remind me if she did, because aside from her face being completely hidden, and that she's Mr. Mayor's secretary, I honestly don't remember a thing about her. Mojo shuts down Utonium's lab as his first order. As everyone reconvenes, they find Mojo crashing just outside, saying that he got thrashed by an octopus. Utonium, Kin, and Peach contact our heroines through a TV call. Even though the lab has been shut down- never mind, it's almost over. The girls transform again after putting their differences aside and going to confront Octi, who they figure out is behind everything. They free Miss Bellum, but get captured. Bubbles pours her heart out, and a tear causes the black particles to escape from Octi. Why? I think it's because the white beam that gave Bubbles her powers purged the particles out. Now earlier I said that this is a loose remake of the episode Octi Evil. It's because a lot of the things that happen in Octi Evil happen here. Octi gets controlled by him, Octi finds its way to go to the school where Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercup attended, and ended up turning into a giant monster in the end. All controlled by him. The episode ends with him fully making up, even the mayor and Miss Bellum makes up. And that was Powerpuff Girls Z, Girls Break Up. And honestly, it's everything you'd want in an updated Powerpuff Girls anime. The designs are fantastic, the music is enjoyable, and the characters are lovable, if at times nonsensical. My final score is a high-end 8 out of 10. Thanks for watching. Tune in next time when we have some Christmas fun with Pikachu and his friends. Like, comment, and subscribe, but most of all, have a great day.